A few years ago, I made a video on how to make Rust skins. Now, I didn't necessarily know exactly what I was doing back then, and things have changed quite a bit since then. So I'm going to be remaking that video. So this version, you're only going to need um, two pieces of software. You're going to need Photoshop and Rust. It's not there's two pieces of software, but you know what I mean. So it's actually quite simple. What you do is you simply go to the workshop within Rust and you click create new item. Now, this will take you to a page where you can see all of the items that you can skin and will basically allow you to see your item in game. So you've on the right, you've got the viewport so you can move around, you know, W, hold the mouse for looking around, that sort of thing. It's pretty um, self-explanatory. And on the left, you have this drop down menu. So this has a list of all the stuff that you can edit. Or you can skin. Um, and it's pretty simple. You've got edit, publish. You can hide this so you can look at it better. So what we need to do is we need to go to edit. Okay, so on the left, you can see that there's several different uh, maps, yeah? So each one of these is called a, a texture map. So you have the diffuse. The diffuse is the map that defines the color and pattern of the object. There are several sliders here that you can use to affect the overall color of this map. By default, the diffuse texture map is a white image with dirt flex towards the bottom. The normal map, on the other hand, basically models can only hold so much information before they become very expensive for the computer to to render basically so a normal map allows you to add more depth to a model but in a much cheaper way than adding more polygons by adding more creases and stuff like that so you can see this model it does have creases but it is relatively simple compared to how the final skin looks so if i drag the normal up you can see that it's adding more definition and it makes it look like there's depth where there isn't actually on the model. Okay, so you've got specular and gloss. Now, this is effectively if the skin um, reflects. So if I turn this all the way up, it, you can see it's not really um, reflecting. It's not like a shiny material, not very glossy. If I turn up the glossiness, you can see that it becomes, you know, a very sort of metallic looking shiny red. These we're not going to worry about. We're not going to worry about um, specular. Now, occlusion is similar to, well, it's, it's it, basically it's another way of adding depth to a texture by changing how light looks around a model in certain areas. So how it reacts in different parts of the model. We're not going to worry about that. It's a little complex for what we're doing. Um, emission. So emission is quite simple, really. It basically just allows the model to, or the texture to emit light in low light situations. We'll have a quick look at that. Um, fuzz mask, not actually sure what the fuzz mask does. Haven't been able to figure it out from the other skins, but I imagine it's just another way of, of softening textures. And then we have the dirt map. So this one's probably the most self-explanatory to be honest. You see, if I turn it down, the skin looks like it's got cleaner. If I turn it up, you can see it looks dirtier. Okay, so the first step in creating our own version is we need to download the uh, diffuse normal and dirt maps so to do this there's a little button here that says save this texture to disk so i've already set up a folder where i'm going to be doing this um, you click that button put it in the folder you want and then you just name this one to t-shirt uh, this diffuse and save same thing for the normal and the dirt. So you can see when I click off the save button that it changes to a PNG. So this is a file type we'll be working with. Um, it's pretty simple. Also, there's another little thing you could do where you can download the actual t-shirt model. Okay, so then if we go into a Photoshop and keep this file open, the folder open here we can open the model with um, the 3d viewer and you can see exactly what that model looks like so you can see it's pretty basic it's got a few creases but we can add more detail with the different maps okay so then we want to open it up in Photoshop so what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag this in here and this is the standard 
uh, div diffuse. And then we're going to add several different folders. So this button here, this is how you create in a group, sorry. Uh, it's folders for the layers. So we're going to call this one diffuse. Okay, so now we've got our different folders and we'll just drag those different uh, texture maps in and we'll chuck these in the requisite folders. And anyway, when you drag something into Photoshop, you need to hit enter afterwards to confirm its placement. Okay, so we're going to work with the diffuse first. I've hid the rest and what we're going to do is we're just going to create a basic skin for now. We're going to change, we're going to add the TGS logo in red because why not? And then we'll place that right in the middle and then we save as. So we're going to save this Photoshop document first. So we're going to save this as t-shirt PSD. Now it's good to um, keep consistent file names just just for ease of, you know, when you're looking at something, you can see exactly what you're doing and it all makes sense. If I look in this file, you can see they've all got the same sort of start and the same layout. Okay, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna save PNG for that. So if we click on the T-shirt diffuse and we just add new in front, and then we've got a new diffuse map that we can then go into Rust with. We can click here click on the image that already exists and click new t-shirt diffuse open and there you can see that the texture uh, the diffuse that we just created is on the model one really cool thing about this way of doing things is that you can actually physically move this say I think oh I actually want this to be much higher near the neck almost and maybe I want it slightly smaller I can drag that to there and then I can just save that again as a PNG and save it over the one that I just created a second ago. Tab back into Rust and it updates and changes where it is on the thing. So you can make rapid changes. You can add stuff and just tab back into Rust and say like, as you've saved it over the other one and you can iterate through pretty quickly. So that's how you do the diffuse. The diffuse is just very basic. So I'd recommend when you're doing stuff like this, if you're making changes, you create a copy and then work on the copy. So we're just going to duplicate the um, the text, duplicate layer, TGS copy, and then we're going to drag, drag, drag. Then we're going to drag this into the normal. Then what we need to do is we need to rasterize the layer, rasterize type, and rasterize type for the normal and now we're going to close this and work only with the normal okay so what we need to do here the first step will be to go to make sure that you've got the TGS uh, logo or the, the writing selected whatever you want to edit and we're going to go to image adjustments and desaturate so this turns it to grayscale then what we're going to want to do is use the magic wand tool and we're going to select the first one by left clicking then holding left shift we're going to click on the next letters or whatever you need to copy and then we're going to go to this layer and hit delete so you can see i've basically created a cookie cutter and cut out that of the existing normal map now we could there's this stuff you can do you can grow your your um selection and you can a lot of photoshop tools if you know how to use photoshop then it will be pretty natural to you if you don't again i'm going to leave some different resources in the description so that you guys can look more into this and find out more if you are actually interested but for now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to this layer and we're going to change the paint bucket or the color where you're currently creating to white and create a white background so we've got the logo there and a plain white background. Then we're going to go to filter, 3D, and normal map. Okay, so there you go. You can see that there's a normal map that looks similar color scheme wise to what you just saw. So for some reason it changes that to 3D. So if we open this, you can also change this to texture map. So you can see what exactly you're looking at see so it's just a copy of that screen so blur changes how you know clear it is 
Obviously you can turn that all the way off or turn it all the way up. This just depends on what you're trying to achieve, but I'm gonna turn the blur up uh, a little bit. We want it to be somewhat smooth. Detail scale. Now this affects how, um, basically a normal map contains X, Y, Z information for the texture in the form of red, green, and blue. So the more pronounced the colors, the stronger the texture or the, the further away it will look, basically the more depth there'll be. So we're not going to do it too strong for now. We're going to leave it probably around here. That looks good. And then we're going to go to layer. And now you can see that we've got this standing out from the rest of the t-shirt. So we're going to save this as a PNG again. Remember, always using PNGs. Change it to new so we know which one it is. Go into rust, click the normal. We're a little quicker than Photoshop there. And apply it so if we change the strength you can see that it changes how the letters look without changing the rest of the model too much so we've just given it an extra layer of depth towards our text so okay now we're going to move on to the emission map before we do the dirt just because it's a little easier to do to show. So what we're going to do is we're going to take another duplicate of this layer. We're going to change that into the emission and we're going to go into emission, create a new layer. Now instead of doing a white background like we did with the normal, we're going to give it a black background. And then we're going to go into this and again, the same exact thing, create. So we select the T, the G and the S or whatever you want, go to the layer, make sure you select that layer and delete, uh, press control D to end the selection, and then we can then hide that, and there you go, you've got your emission map. So if we go ahead and save this, and then we'll just call it new, just to keep the same file structure. So if we add this to the, if we turn it to the night time, and we turn that up, you can see, you can obviously create different colors by using different variances of red, green, and blue. So you can create blue, or you can have pure white. But again, what you want to achieve there, wherever you want it to glow that brightly, again, it's entirely up to you, but it gives you quite a nice effect. Okay, and finally, let's look at the dirt map. So if we look at the dirt map, you can see that it's actually just um, a plain transparent image with different amounts of, of color. So this is pretty easy to do. Several ways you can do this. If you're familiar with Photoshop again, you can create it however you want. If you're not, then I'll show you a quick way that you could do it. So here we've got the stamp tool and I've selected this stamp here. I think it's just a default one. And as you can see, this is a sort of effect you get. Now you can change the opacity so it appears slightly weaker. You can turn it up in places, turn it right down, and you can achieve a different sort of dirt effect and make it, you know, more uniform, different tools you can use. So now what we could do is we can save this again, PNG. Click T-shirt, dirt, new, save. And then we go into here, we click dirt color, new T-shirt dirt. Now, if we turn this all the way up, you can see there's the texture we just placed. Turn it down and you can get different effects. Obviously you can do whatever you want with this. You can create interesting patterns and basically just experiment and and you know play to your heart's content the next step would be to publish so what you this is pretty simple just click this button obviously you're going to want to make a few skins get used to the whole process before you start publishing them but yeah this this is the basic process but there's also other skins that you can skin lots of them here but for now this is going to be a start if you want me to do a more advanced tutorial with 
uh, actually like creating more complex skins, then I'm happy to do it. But I will leave lots of um, information in the description because I know that some of you are going to want to really get into this and uh, you may not know where to start. I've actually got a background in this sort of stuff, so I, I do know where to look for stuff. So I will compile a list of different resources that will help you get into this this sort of stuff and show you what you need to learn. So guys, if you like the video, don't forget to leave a like and comment down below if you want me to do more. And yeah, thanks for watching. Goodbye.